Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this video I want to talk about implicit and explicit operators in C-Sharp which is a feature that many people don't actually know about. It is a very powerful feature and because it's very powerful it can actually be abused and be misused. So in this video I'm going to introduce you to the feature, talk about it, explain how it works and then give you my opinion on whether you should use it and whether you should not use it because you can harm yourself more than benefit off of it. If you like the type of content and you want to see more make sure you're subscribing the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. Now before I dive into the code, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, the abp.io platform. ABP is an open source web application framework that fills the gap between ASP.NET Core and common business application requirements. It automates repetitive tasks by conventions and provides many useful features to make you focus on your own code rather than dealing with infrastructure concerns. You can develop anything from microservice solutions to modular monolithic applications based on the industry best practices. ABP comes with multiple UI and database options out of the box with production-ready startup solution templates. They also provide commercial themes, modules and tools for the ABP framework and offer premium support and additional services for enterprise users. It is a complete development platform for modern web solutions and it's a project I'm happy recommending. To learn more about ABP.io, check out the link in the description. So what do I have here? I have a program.cs which only initializes a single ID based on a GUI. Now it's very common that to fight primitive obsession, which is a topic we talked about before on this channel, and you can check that video if you want, you're going to create a value object which is representing that notion of the primitive you're trying to represent with a domain object. For example, if I am to use this ID to represent a user ID, I would make a class around that called user ID. And then this user ID would have the GUID in it, and I would name this value. And in here, you can also have constraints. Again, if you don't really understand the value of having uh, a value object, you can check that video because I do go very much in depth. In here, I just assume you understand why this is useful. I'm going to use that as an example. We're going to initialize that from the constructor. And now to represent a user ID in my domain logic, I will have a user ID equals uh, a new user ID. ID with the GUID in it to initialize it and that's it. Now let me just quickly explicitly specify the types here in this file. So we have a GUID here and then we have a user ID. Now this conversion works, you know, we're initializing the object and we create a user ID out of it. But what if a GUID could also implicitly be converted to a user ID? And I'm going to show you exactly how this can actually happen in C Sharp. I'm going to go ahead and make a public static implicit operator and this might be keywords you've never seen before I'm going to explain how they work and then you have the destination type so for us it's going to be a user ID and then we have the source type which is the uh, GUID we are converting from and then you're going to say return new user ID GUID here and now by doing that this then enables us and I can actually even remove that uh, because of uh, C sharp 9 um, I can go here and I can not have this new user ID code. I can simply implicitly convert from a GUID to a user ID. Do you see what happened? This ID is still a GUID up here. But the moment I assign it and I specify that, hey, this is a user ID. If I do have an implicit operator that says from GUID to user ID, then it can convert. The, the opposite doesn't work. If I have, you know, new um, or user ID converted, for example, equals user ID, this does not work because there is no implicit operator to allow for that. Um, and of course, if I go back and I comment this bit out, then this code does not work. So an implicit operator allows us to implicitly convert from one type to another. And this can actually be two ways as well. So you could very much have the opposite where you have um, from a user ID to a GUID and then that will satisfy the second thing that we have there. All you need to do is user ID dot value and this should work and now this compiles. We go from a GUID to implicitly converting to a user ID and then implicitly converting to a GUID back again. Now this is actually supported by the language itself in some types. For example, let's say I have an integer and that integer is some int equals, I don't know, a random number. And then I have a long bigger int equals some int. 
This works. This is implicitly converting from an integer to a long. And that's because we know that an integer can fit in the memory of a long. So the compiler, the system can automatically implicitly convert that. However, you cannot do the opposite, which is int some other int equals bigger int because you cannot implicitly convert from a long which can be larger than integer because you can hit overflows but you can explicitly say that hey i know that this is not bigger because i know my code plus explicitly convert it to an int and this will work so this is the explicit operator conversion and let me show you how that works now to demonstrate that i'm going to copy one of the conversions here and I'm going to paste it and then I'm going to comment it out and then I'm going to change this to explicit. So that's the only thing I changed and this still works. However, now the conversion works completely differently. Now the compiler goes from saying, hey, I have an implicit operator. You told me how to convert from this to this. I can do this to basically enforcing you to hard cast it. And if you hard cast it, then you will hit the explicit operator. Let me just put some breakpoints here to actually show you exactly how this works in action. So I'm going to let this debugger start and I'm going to create a new GUID, E21, and then this, and by the way, just to see again, this is the ID assignment to a user ID and this goes through the implicit operator. So it's going to call any code you have here. It's going to create the new type and now I have a user ID with that value. and the opposite which is the explicit operator because we told it I, I explicitly tell you to convert to this object and convert to that and you don't have to be limited to those types you could have other types if you wanted to but you usually especially in value objects you have the primitive type and then the actual um it might be reference or value type that you have that is actually the value represented by the value object so that is basically the feature and now you might be thinking right what if i have something like this let me just i don't have to comment out anything actually i'm just going to remove those breakpoints i'm going to close that don't need anymore let's say i have a product here some some object like poco right new uh product and then this product has an automatically initializable id we didn't care about that this is uh, some product and then this is a price again um just completely uh, random number and this is a decimal cool so we have this product and a very common scenario is that you would need to map that product to a dto right you, you would have to write a mapper that converts from your product domain class or um, API contract to some DTO that you store to the database and you usually have a mapper for that well you can technically if you have an implicit or explicit operator use that and now this converts from a domain object to a DTO and this is done again by implicit operators you can have from and to in that object however this is the usage that i do not encourage because this can cause unintended behavior and it's not the responsibility of either the domain or the dto object to know how to be converted from one item to the other so even though you can convert from one type to the other uh, and treat it as a mapper I would not recommend you doing this and I've seen this in a lot of places and I fundamentally disagree with it. Make extension methods, make mappers, make whatever you want, do not have it in the object. It's not its responsibility to know how to do this. That's at least my opinion on the matter. But you can and this shows you how. And now again, if, if I debug this and show you very quickly how this works, it does initialize uh, the product and this is a product object that one of the classes I showed you and now if I step in here it goes through the implicit operator and it creates a new thing that you are mapping from and you have that here with the right values so this is the feature now something else that can happen is that even though this object the the product object only has implicit operators you can actually uh, if I go back here and I change this to a var and actually, let me copy that name first. And I change it to a var and I go here and I hard cast here. This looks like an explicit operator conversion, but this is because the implicit operator seems to also support that. Because um, if I go here and I just comment out the operators, 
you see that this doesn't work anymore and even though they're implicit they also support the explicit part of it but if I change this to explicit both of them and I change this back to implicit then this doesn't work implicit overrides and also supports explicit but it doesn't work the other way around that's all I had for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this video possible if you want to support me as well you can find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well and I'll see you in the next video keep coding